Thank you so much. And of course, we'll have the gorgeous Padma Lakshmi. Thank you. Uh, tell us if you'd like to talk about your collection and the bottle and why Padma. Sure. Yeah. Well, very briefly, my collection always kind of evolves. Uh, it's never revolutionary on the ideas I work with all the time on how to be India modern. Pani, pani, how we take something that's Indian instead of going backwards into time and being the Maharaja syndrome, which is okay but for bridal, then we have to find a contemporary thing because that's the only way Indian fashion can be remotely have a chance to be global if people don't have to tie and drape. And the other thing that I love, as you all know, is the drape form, which we're losing in India, so we structure the draping in everything. So it looks like things are loosely tied and wrapped. That's the basic thing. It was a lot of ivory, a lot of prints. It's for summer. It's seen now, buy now, it's already in the store. I normally always believe that the clothes should be the stars of the show and rarely do I allow a showstopper to upstage this clothes but when I had it with Padma I thought it was the perfect choice because she, she's here by the way to launch her two books, she's on a book promotional tour and this is by chance that she's here. So to me that's an amazing feat already. She wears her age, she wears her confidence, she wears her Indianness. She embodies what I'd like to think our kind of woman is who is India modern. She's lived abroad, she's very proud of her Indianness, she writes books. Is this a press conference about these clothes or Padma? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's why Padma. And I let her to the end. It was just my good luck that she happened to be here. And when just free Chando Kopilaya and Amji rang me and said she's here, I said, don't even think twice. She's better be in my show and not on the show. <laughs> and it, it's great that we worked out because we shot many years together in a dismal film that sang off the gateway of India straight into the ocean. But the show was beautiful yeah. and my outfit was glorious. I and looked fabulous. we've met here and there in Delhi so it's been great to reconnect. It's been fun, it makes the process fun and like I said and like you all saw, she embodies, I love the way she went striding down, she moves her hands like she's walking on the streets of New York and that to me is an attitude. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for having me and especially to Tarun. Um, I've never walked at Lakme Fashion Week and so to do that at this point in my career and to do it for such an amazing, iconic designer who really defines what the best of Indian fashion is, has been and will become in the next decade or two is, is truly an honor. Um, I was um, very tickled to see my old friend again, beyond how talented he is and how visionary he is about his clothes and about bridging this gap between East and West. He's also a really nice person. He's also really fun to hang out with. And um, Tarun and I have known each other for years and I don't see him often. I see him sporadically every now and again. But whenever I do, it's like we never it's ever true. left yeah. each other's side. And, right. and when you have people who are so talented but are fun to work with as well, it's truly inspiring and I'm just very happy to be here. I'm glad I didn't fall. It's totally <laughs> neutral. <laughs> um, if she fell, she'd have made it cool. It would have been the new thing. I would have wanted it in their show, so but we're glad she didn't fall. I'm glad I didn't fall. There you go. Thank you. Uh, we didn't know one of our attractions, so any Well, actually, the way this evolved was that we had a painter come into the studio, an artist who painted all these motifs. Oh, sorry, we had an artist come into the studio. And you can do these things in India because I got mm -hmm. tired of using these prints that we bought out of the Italian studios and then they started looking very generic. So I thought, why not get a painter because we have a little foundation that we support these guys and some of them work as teachers. And he sat there for two months painting just beautiful motifs from books. Uh, from old Mughal things, from flora and fauna books, insects, there were insects, there were butterflies. These were all painted and then these were digitally removed and calibrated and put into the prints in a random way. So it just depends where it went, you know. We tried screen printing. We wanted to move away from what had become our typical jewel look into something fresh and easier. As you've noticed, there's almost nobody here in Indian clothes. So Indians are wearing a lot of Western clothes and they wear Indian clothes for a very ceremonial function. And we want to give them an alternative that is Indian and has the drape, 
made his contemporary and suits and flatters them for color mm -hmm. and form. But that doesn't have to be a, a cheap dress because that's what's available here and doesn't suit most Indian bodies. So you can wear the anarchy as a dress, you can put on a churidar, mm -hmm. you can drape a scarf around, you can belt it. You've got to be free with clothes. Anyway, that's the story of the rose. Sorry to digress. As usual, verbal diarrhea. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, was this salmon pink is one of my favorite colors. And um, I, you know, obviously I don't wear gabras with a 10 meter diameter every day, but it's a great color, it is, yeah. I'm stealing this. It okay. was made for me, so yes. I'm just putting it in my purse. I just want you to know that. Um, I, Do I have a choice? Uh, no, you don't. I'm asking. <laughs> um, right, she decides she's doing it, it's going I'm in her doing purse. It. I'm, it's going, I have a very big purse. So, um, no, I do wear clothes like this. I tend to mix and match. So if I was wearing, you know, one of his beautiful um, heavier gagras, I would probably wear it very low on the hip and I would wear it um, in New York or, or, you know, Paris or wherever I was, I would wear that with like probably a little t-shirt, like just to break it up a little yeah. bit. Um, there aren't that many occasions that I have to wear a full, you know, as he says, the traditional thing. I felt incredible in that first outfit. I felt like some mobile bride going down the runway. I mean, I don't think I even looked that beautiful at my own wedding. It was beautiful. And, and so it's also that garment that I had earlier is very light. Um, which is very important because you want a woman to um, have something that's very grand when it's the right time, but you also want her to feel like herself. And I certainly felt like that um, in, in that outfit as well as this. I mean, I would wear this with a pair of jeans and a leather jacket and call it a day, maybe some strappy heels. Um, you know, I find the thing that's beautiful about his clothing is that it is very versatile. I went to the boutique for my fitting and I found a sari with this beautiful, like, mal mal, um, full sleeve, gathered blouse with little tiny pearls for buttons. And I'm gonna wear that, not as a sari blouse, but I'm gonna wear that just as a blouse with some shorts or a beautiful organza skirt. And then I'll wear the sari too, um, and some other things that I found. Um, but I think the one beautiful thing about his clothing is that not only is it modern, but it's very timeless. You know, I know that he does two shows a year, and so, he probably wants you to focus on what's in the stores now, but I have to tell you, there's pictures of me online in a beautiful maroon outfit, uh, very transparent, <laughs> but um, very beautiful, and I still love that outfit. I mean, that, that outfit is like 15 years old or something, and it's still timeless, and you know, I think like just after that, I think Halle Berry wore like the very similar yeah. dress that she won the Oscar for. So it just goes to show you that he's always thinking ahead, but you know, it doesn't matter if you have a Tarun piece from today, from yesterday, or a decade ago. It really stands the test of time. The Ivory series, he had just a beautiful skirt, and it looked so grand, but there was no embroidery in it. It was just beautifully, like cut work, I'm sure I'm not gonna describe it properly, but, and then a really short, very simple choli blouse with a round neck. And um, I think she had also a chunni, and I think I would like that. There were several in that first series of creams that I thought was stunning. And I think that color also suits our skin. It's very flattering, yeah, it uh, whether you're really tan or in the winter, it's beautiful. I mean, in, in the West, we call that winter white, so you can wear it all year long. The Kora Kapra. Kora Kapra yeah. is fantastic, and it's really light, but it has a beautiful weight to it. So when you when you spin, it just catches the wind. I saw girls running, you know, yeah, was... backstage, and it, I wish I had had my phone on me because it looks so poetic to see these lovely girls, you know. That would make a great shoot. What yeah. an idea! Yeah, it's a beautiful shoot. Any more questions? What would be your I mean, I think the sari is a beautiful garment. So I think there are a million ways you can drape the sari, whether you wear it in a Gujarati style or, you know, however you want to do it. One of the things I love about Tarun is that he makes it really easy for people like me who don't wear saris every day by, you know, pre kind of draping them. And otherwise I use like 45 safety pins in my it sari. It kills it. It kills the drape. Yeah, it does. It snags the fabric and it's horrible. But I mean, I think the sari itself is something that's so versatile, um, but I love a good gagra. I mean, I love a really low-waisted gagra with nothing but 
like some beautiful heavy bile and being barefoot. To me, that rustic look is just beautiful. so feminine. You know, it's it's like those old temples. Paintings, yeah. Yeah, paintings, and it, you really can't beat it. Well, we, you know, we do a lot of things that are now for the ready-to-wear, but much lighter. We use computer engineer things. We do a lot of printing that's digitally done because you can do colors that you couldn't possibly do by screen and you can engineer the printing. So it's great for production. We do um, a lot of soldering of crystals, Swarovski, and light embroideries in the factories in uh, Calcutta and machine embroidery. That's for the lighter range like tonight. It's not very heavy on heavy handwork and also plissé. So we do the prints and have it permanently pleated so that you can wear it for six hours and it's not crushing. To me, that you can travel, you can pull things out of a suitcase, put it on right away. These are modern requirements. And that's why people in the bro abroad wear so many, most of their clothes I have a synthetic blend because it's sort of wash and wear. They don't have time, they don't have hobbies. So we've got to incorporate this as we're going to lose it all to that. You know, you'll bring out your big kanji but I'm for the big wedding. So we're thinking always about how to break this up and you know we had the printing sari mm -hmm. which you described with a little mal mal ruched mm -hmm. blouse it's on linen with a classy border but printed in an asymmetrical way which on screen might not be possible so you have to also give the younger generation freshness so they don't they don't want to look like their grandmothers anymore you know it's just a fact of life so you know we work on these things and the draping we learned over years we sometimes get italian drapers or pattern makers in to help us, but now, you know, my studios, it's like Chanel, she was never trained, but by the end of her life, nobody could do a shoulder on a jacket. Even today, the Chanel jacket is kind of, you know, something legendary. So you develop, a studio develop its own techniques as it goes along and keeps battling at something, you know. It's all a process of trial and error. Thank you. Uh, one last question. How yeah. has your tour been? How has your India tour been? It's been great. I was um, just at the Kala Boda Festival and I did an inaugural talk there and after it was finished I had to tear out of there and come here to be in time for hair and makeup. It's been really wonderful. Um, when I usually come to India, I don't work here and I usually just wind up spending time with my family and I've always missed having a grown-up life in India that was independent. We talked about last yeah. night. Yeah. And, you know, I know people like Tarun, but I can count on, on one hand the people that I know like Tarun that I keep in touch with here, just because I'm, I'm not in the milieu. So to go around the country and travel with my two books has been quite moving. It's been really great to have the feedback from people who have read it, you know, and, and I wanted Indians to like the memoir. It was very important for me that it resonated with everyday Indians or my peers in this country. And, I'm very happy to say that I think it has. I look forward, I mean, we're, doing more, uh, we're doing four more cities. Um, so tomorrow I'm going to Hyderabad and then after that I'll be in Delhi and then I'll do the huddle for the Hindu newspaper there. It's a think conclave, I think it's the first year they're doing it. So um, I'll be doing that That's and then great. I'll be doing my last events in Chennai on Valentine's Day. So. Uh, I wanted to know that how different or how similar is the paparazzi culture I mean, in both the countries. Like mm -hmm. recently, Priyanka Chopra uh, said that you know that the paparazzi culture in the US is too much to, to be taken you know, by Indian celebrities. Mm -hmm. So, what is your take on that? I mean, I would imagine if you're somebody like Priyanka and you're coming from this culture to that culture, it could be quite a shock because she's already such a big star here. So, she would be. Um, used to a lot of attention, but it doesn't really compare. Um, it's not on the same level at all. I mean, here I've been able to move quite freely. Um, people are very respectful. They ask if they can take the picture most of the time. In New York, it's pretty unbearable. I have, you know, paparazzi parked outside of my door, my very door, and it be, you know, it actually stops me from walking my daughter to school as often as I would like. Um, it's gotten so bad that actually we've had some of our actresses go and um, lobby Congress to make laws to, you know, especially for our children. Like, I want Krishna to have a normal 
life. And so when she's a grown up, if she wants to be in the limelight, that will be her choice. And I try not to show her face directly when I put up a picture on Instagram or whatever, but it doesn't matter. I mean, a basic Google search will get you millions of pictures. And, and so it's a little hard. It's especially hard when you're trying to shield your family from that because I've signed up to be in the public eye, but you know, those close to me are very private people and, and they haven't. And, and so far my family's been really supportive. Um, and I don't have it nearly as bad as you know, many A-list people who are in the limelight, like, you know, I mean, I'm just, I just have a TV show on food and I somehow managed to get way more attention than I should for my career. But, um, but if you're somebody who's really like a movie star like Nicole Kidman or something like that, it can re really be obnoxious. And I've had friends in that situation and it's, it's, it's not pleasant. It almost becomes a little bit dangerous. The best part of being Padma Lakshmi is being. <laughs> the best part of being me is that I get to be Krishna's mom. It's really the best thing that's ever happened to me. And every day is a joy and is a new discovery. And the good thing about having a child is that you get to experience all of the simple pleasures of life, whether it's ice cream or sand between your toes, anew like a child, and it really makes you appreciate those things. And it's also given me um, a greater sense of humor because I don't sweat the small stuff anymore. I don't really care if I gain five pounds or you know the book didn't sell X amount of copies because at the end of the day, when I'm 80, I'm not going to remember that. I'm going to remember my toes in the sand with Krishna. You speak so well. God bless you. I want to read your memoirs of the play. I should have taken